working out that we have been friends for 50 years. I can't believe it. Wow. Good friends. Um, her wedding anniversary for 50 years is next year. I was at that wedding. We were godparents to each other's two of each other. Yeah, one of our children. Yeah. Um, we worked together. I was Wendy's PR for many years when she 16. was. Sixteen. Yes. Was it? <laughs> when, um, so most of the time I had a PR agency. Wendy was my client, and uh, um, it was a wonderful experience. Now, having watched the Mary Quant film, of course, a lot of memories came up for us, and we were giggling a lot because there were lots of people we knew who were being quoted and who were talking who didn't know what they were talking about. But anyway, <laughs> they, were there. they weren't even there. Tony McKee with his blue scarf. <laughs> The thing about Mary Quads in the 60s was that at that point it was a bit early for even for me, yeah, both and they, of us. Yeah. but what an amazing innovator and what a fantastic revolutionary she was in terms of fashion. Yeah. Um, so by the time I started my PR business, which was in about 1971, and you started your design, you, you, so you went to college, tell, tell your story, so you went, okay. you did a foundation course? I did a foundation course at Medway College of Art in Rochester, and then I did, it was pre dip then I did another year where you Foundation was brilliant. You did everything, all the arts, and I specialised in fashion. I decided I, that's what I wanted to do. So in your second year, you specialised for one day a week in fashion, as it was called then, um, dress department. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> Not fashion. Fashion was everything. The dress department. Um, and uh, and then I went to Hornsey College of Art and did a, a BA there um, for three years and. And then yeah, yeah. Started and then I started on yeah. I, I was I worked for um, a, a company, what's known as the rag trade then, um, and um, and now actually. Well, and now, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then I just started. I always made my own clothes. We used to go out buy some fabric in the market on the Saturday afternoon or Saturday morning knock up a dress and go out to a party that night. So I was very used to, well, we made our own clothes all the time. Um, and uh, But it was quite unusual even then for you, for a young designer to leave college and almost immediately start their own business, wasn't it? Yeah. Or was, uh, yes, no, it was quite, it was. yeah, it was quite. And I, I mean, I made my own clothes um, and it was, I, I used to... the confidence to think that you could... Start a business. Just, just. I just it. wanted to. I just did it. Did not we? Wanted to, didn't yeah, we? yeah, yeah. I mean, you didn't. You didn't think twice about it. You just sort of did it because, you know, you could. Yeah, you I know. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very different now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I started off making my own clothes. A friend of mine used to buy them. You know, friends used to have them as well. But, you know, they used to sell them to them. And one went into a shop, it was a countdown in the King's Road. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> and uh, and the owner said, oh, I love your jacket, where did you get that? And it was one of mine. And it was like lurex and satin and it's all that this sort of brocades, very they weren't really day wear fabrics. I, I used to use more sort of you know Evening wear. I well, suppose. textiles were always so important to you, right yeah. the way through, weren't they? Yes. You designed your own fabrics in yeah. India over the years, and yeah. So um, and then so I went along. She go and see them. She might buy some, and she did. And then it just expanded from there. Really extraordinary. I, so I you had your little shop. office in Soho in, in Berwick Street. Berwick Street, yeah. Up those stairs, yeah. carrying the clothes up, then bringing yeah. them down. Bringing the journalists, some of the journalists who were models in that film, like Grace Coddington, who was yes. if any yeah. of you familiar with Grace Coddington's oh, name, yes. she was a you know major fashion Vogue. editor at Vogue for yeah. many many years, yeah. um, and she was a model in many of the Mary Quant scenes we saw tonight. And so we would, so I would sort of be the one that would. Wendy and I met, and um, I loved her clothes straight away, <laughs> and started working with her, uh, promoting promoting them to the fashion. Editors, and then you started having your fashion shows, shows which were yeah. amazing. And the first one was at the Playboy Club. Job, <laughs> 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 your memory is better than mine. <laughs> we went along there, and we had we met Victor Lounge. Did we? Yeah. <laughs> and we had bunny girls. It was a 9.30 show and we had bunny 9 girls. 9.30 in the morning. In the morning, yeah. Oh. And we had bunny girls serving back spheres and cross yeah, that's right. Um, oh my God. That's yeah, so that was the first show. Yeah. 1978. Okay. <laughs> and at that time, I mean, it was a time, when I say it wasn't an easy time for young designers, but there were other designers, Catherine Hamlet, yeah. Vivian was down the King's Road, yeah. mostly women, Miss Mouse, if any of you yeah. remember Miss Mouse, 
who was another client of mine. She did some fantastic clothes in the... Obviously no one does. Anyway, she was... <laughs> she had blue hair. She was quite a character. I'm amazed yeah. she ever... Though it was all women, pretty much, wasn't it? It was, yes, it was. And then, and then very you had, few men. Very few men. And then you had the more classic designers like Jean Muir and Bill Gibb. And yeah. Zandra was never classic, but she was always selling to that more, yes. more avant garde sort of yes, but the rich that. American she market. Was more, she knows were all about the, the, the fabrics. Yeah. And the fabrics. It was an amazing time to be working in fashion in London. In yeah, the 70s, just, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Yeah. It was exciting, it was vibrant. Um, Mary Kwan actually was the only one that really got that licensing thing right until Debenham started working with Jasper Conran and other designers yeah, and, and, yeah, and so on. Yeah. But really, Mary Kwan, she, I, I remember that guy, Mr. Curry, I used to go up to hit to the tights. I was always going up to Mary Kwan tights to borrow, not borrow, I think give the back, <laughs> yeah. uh, to, to get the hosiery for, for the, the shows. fashion shows. We'd always go up there, I remember him. And uh, but she was brilliant with the licensing because the French designers would license and the Americans, yeah. the Italians. Yeah. But yeah. We, the English never quite, never, did. never no, happened no. quite the we same way. Really did that. No, like just anyway, well. it was what it was. But it was more about it was very much sort of an art college scene. It was avant garde. The shows were yeah. avant garde. Yeah. And you just did. I mean, I just wanted to do what I really believed in. That's why I didn't really like working for another company because I couldn't actually. I didn't have free reign, and I wanted. I mean, it's exactly what um, Mary Quant said. It's belief in yourself, yes. and it, that's what pushes you. And you know, you want that challenge as well, and yeah. just to do. I mean, have great what fun. you love, yeah. you know, and enjoy what you're doing. And it was a sort of very strong social scene because we all, you know, Jasper was is a very close friend yes. and people like that. We, yeah. we, it was a party scene. It was all a bit crazy. Yeah. We worked very hard. Yeah. We played hard. Uh, and we had a good time. We and, did. Yeah, yeah, we did. And then moving on, of course, after so many years of your business, you then went into academia yeah. to teach yeah. the next generation, which yeah. was... Uh, yeah. so, explain so, that. so, well, what happened, I had to put my uh, company into liquidation. Which a lot of people did in those days. Economic <laughs> climate at the time. And, um, and I had, when I had my company, I used to do a lot of... Uh, teaching, just a, a you know, go and set a project for students at various art colleges all over the country, and and then go back and crit it, and 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 I just did that for you know many years, and then uh, when I stopped my company, um, I had a young baby at the time, Augustus, yeah, um, and um, it so happened I didn't know what I was going to do, <laughs> or anything. and uh, I I. Well, I happened to be external examiner at St Martin's, mm -hmm. Central St Martin's, and they lost their course director and they said, would I like to go and carry it, you know, take it over for a while. And it was just a temporary thing at the first, and then 60, no, 10 years later yeah. I was still there. And what an amazing it. time to be the head of fashion at St Martin's, because at the time yeah, of Alexander was... McQueen, Stella McCartney, yeah. some of the most talented yeah. designers still yeah. were people that were your, they were your students. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, it, was, it was great teaching. You know, teaching them, and they were all. Yes, you know, so, well, we wanted them to again believe in themselves, and just take risks. Didn't matter if they made a mistake; doesn't matter. Just take that risk. But there was always this spontaneity. What saddened me about the fashion industry as it is today is that it's become um, very formulaic. It's certainly the shows and the way it's presented. You have the, you know, when we used to have all the sort of pop stars and all yeah. the celebrities sitting in the front row. It was very spontaneous. Yeah. Yeah. It, was the days of, it was the days when fashion designers used to make a lot for the rock stars. So you yeah. used to, Roxy Music oh, were Roxy your big music. one. Roxy Music, yes, that, that. I met them. Um, I met Brian Ferry through a, a, their solicitor, actually. who <laughs> was an old, old friend of mine. And, um, and I started making clothes for him. They wanted, you know, yeah. he wanted stage clothes and we did a bell boy outfit and a, yeah, we sort of invented them as we got in the Toreador, the, you know, it was just, it was great fun. It was great fun. And then also yeah. I did Phil Manzanera as well. Yeah, did the Rumble 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 number for yes. him. And, um, and lots of the others, you were involved working with a lot of well, stars. Well, Pete Townsend used yeah. to buy from me. Yeah. Um, Roger Daltrey, I mean... Quite, yeah, you know, yeah a lot of music. So that was yeah. it was when the fashion I suppose that was the eighties mostly when the fashion industry and the music music industry really came together. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, we made sure that the right rock stars was or musicians, <coughs> Boy George and all that would always be yeah, in the front Boy of George body. Used to come he used to come by a lot from you. Yeah. So we would always make sure that they were at the fashion show, they'd be seen. Um, even Madonna, who would always turn up an hour and a half late. Then it got to the point of like Princess Diana would 
turn yes. up at some of the shows. It was an amazing time in the 80s yeah. in the fashion industry where everything in London was exploding and yeah. um, and it was great to be part of that scene. And Fashion Aid. Oh, Fashion, Fashion Aid. Aid. Oh, thank you for reminding me that. that. Royal, yeah, Royal well, at the same Hall. time as Live Aid, um, we put on Fashion Aid at the Royal Albert Hall and uh, it was amazing and it got filmed by Kevin Godley and Lowell Kremp, 10CC also. 10CC. Oh, 10CC. Yeah, don't forget that, they're, they're friends <laughs> of ours. Um, and then we did this amazing show where we had designers from the UK and mm. around the world and everybody did like a, a whole, it wasn't just a fashion show, it was an entertainment. Yeah. We had uh, Jasper had... Izzy Miyake and Giorgio yeah. Armani, I think. Yeah. And then rock stars like Annie Lennox and, and others would introduce the sections. And then we had like on Ma Jasper Comrade Madness were on tightropes yeah. playing the. Da, 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 da. Anyway, <laughs> the Jasper Comrade suits. And, and the whole the Catherine Hamlet section was dancing in the street. Absolutely insane <laughs> with everybody in the big yellow t shirts, including me dancing on the stage. And um, very sadly, it never got shown on TV, although there's a wonderful film of it. It was a fashion show like there's never been before or since, where it was entertainment, it was music, it was fashion, it was fun. Yeah. It, was, it was such a wonderful energy there. And that um, was used. There was a, you were one of the curators, weren't you, for, from Cat, Club Cat, to Cat Cat Walk, Cat Walk, which was a big exhibition. We showed the v yeah, the film, about, part of the film. About four or five years ago, yeah. it was on at the v a huge exhibition of how from the club scene and from the streets, it went to the catwalk and um, they That's, showed a little yeah. bit of the show from Fashion from Age. Age yeah. And I, I, I can just tell this very quickly story, that I was sitting there, I went there on my own one afternoon and I was sitting there watching these little sections and suddenly I saw me, 30 years earlier, dancing on the stage in a Catherine Hamlet yellow t-shirt and I'm sitting <laughs> there and watching and it was like, and then that me in the screen, it was like a that looked down at me sitting there watching myself <laughs> 30 years on. And I was like, it's okay, we did all right. <laughs> Still here. It was an extraordinary experience. Well, we did it with Harvey Goldsmith and Bob Geldof, and um, it was a wonderful, wonderful show. Yeah, so in lots of other moments, I'm sure, that we could remember if we've had long enough for a chat. But British Fashion Awards, London Fashion Week, which we brought together, yeah. which I got yeah. all the catwalks together for all the designers so they could be in one spot. Yes. Yeah. Make it easy for the yeah, for the buyers. buyers and, it was, well, well, and make a vibe, get a vibe yeah. going. We were very good at Now we're getting the vibe going here, then we're getting the vibe going there. <laughs> um, anyway, so it was an extraordinary time. And then from St. Martin's, you then went to the Royal College of Art, yeah. which is, of course, really the top academic fashion job, yeah, isn't all, it? Running the fashion. MA and research. Yeah. And um, how long were you there? 16 years. Are you? <laughs> I did that last years ago. Anyway, yeah, yeah. that was an amazing time for you, for it the was, Royal College. Yeah, it was one of the hardest decisions of my life, actually, so to leave St Martin's, which I'd built up, and then, you know, start afresh. And it was a, and then I thought, actually, it's a challenge, just go for it. And it was, it was, well, brilliant. Yeah, and you yeah. became a professor. I'm so a professor. having been this sort of street <laughs> designer, now she's a professor. Um, Emeritus. <laughs> and then again, many designers, top designers, came through Wendy's classes, who she taught at the Royal College, yeah. and uh, and now we're here. And Wendy is now retired, living in the Devils with her husband John, yeah. um, up the road, which is we never thought we'd end up living in sort of ten minutes from each other either. I never um, thought I'd leave London. Really. <laughs> Indeed, I, I know it's extraordinary, isn't it? And that's what's so strange for us to watch that film tonight with so many people we know in it, and it's like another lifetime, really. Yeah. But, but meanwhile, let's look at fashion as it is today, because that, that was the end of the film, starting to look at fashion. And, you know, the fast fashion and Vivian dumping. I mean, it does make me laugh, Vivian, because she's in the papers today with the newest collection on the catwalk in Paris. Do not buy any more fashion, but here's my new collection. <laughs> Bless her, but I love her, dear. Yeah. She's fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant, genius, but it's funny. So what do you think is the future of fashion? Well, I'm uh, on the trustee, well, I'm a trustee of Graduate Fashion Week, so, yeah, you get the vibe from the students. And I just think, I'm a dreadful hoarder, and I wear clothes for years and years and years. The coat I've got on tonight is probably about 30 years old. But, so, I wear things and wear them. Um, and I think, yes, yeah, some I'm saying on the film, it's, I think the students now are wanting to mend and redo and yeah. you know, old clothes, Ups, yeah. embroider them up. Yeah. And, and I just think that's the way it's going. And it is, I mean, I think you always feel better if you've 
paid a little bit extra for something and you feel more special in it than you something very cheap. Um, yeah, yeah. So, cheap fashion. We, we, yeah. You know, I mean, the thing is, there's still a lot of people that can't. Afford. They can't afford it. That's that's. But the then there, there is. Yeah. I mean, the whole charity shop fashion, yeah. which is exploding. Yeah. And and several designers in this in London Fashion Week this year, I did see in the papers, were actually showing catwalk collections made from old clothes, clothes that they yeah. up, up yeah. scaled. And I, yeah, I think that's the way it's going. It's going to be yeah. very interesting. I, yeah. very and interesting. I, I mean, we used to when I was. You know, student. We used to buy vintage clothes yeah. all the time and wear them. Yeah. Didn't really buy new clothes that often. It was no. sort of all the old. You had to go around all the old vintage and shops. And of course, now the Russian market's disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I did see a big sign: Gucci and Chanel are closing their shops down yes. in Moscow. I thought, well, that's that. And Levi's have pulled out. Well, they've, a lot of them have, but yeah. those very up market expensive businesses yeah. seriously yeah. were. Russia was their market. Yeah. So you know, it's, it's going to be a changing world. So, um, looking ahead, I think that's what we're talking about. We had, had young Sammy here, who goes to King Arthur's, who's one of the, I don't want to embarrass you, so, but anyway, she's one of the, she loves fashion and wants to work in fashion, so she came in tonight to meet Wendy and have a private one-to-one -one mentoring <laughs> session, which, which is fantastic. Um, Sam, Sam is one of the young girls that I mentor every week from King Arthur's, and it's so interesting to see how they look at life and how they're looking at the world and and they are the future let's face it and i mean penny's got a 14 year 14 still 14 year old i mean this is that generation of the, the young women today and so um one of the things that we were talking about today in our mornings meeting was how um those of us who've had a certain amount of experience of life and are managing talking personally just about to hold up to my sanity um <laughs> maybe as mentors as, as sort of helping the young from our mistakes and our challenges as much as our successes can do cross-generational mentoring so that's something that penny and i launched do you remember four years ago here power power of women let's we did it launch it here and in bristol and everybody said oh yes let's do it and now maybe is the time so that's something that i i was talking about today to several people we might do that it's like who would like to get involved with cross-generational mentoring where we can work with the younger people in the area in the town in the schools and by our own experiences and hopefully a bit of wisdom can support them as they move into this what is going to be a very challenging future so um i'm thrilled that you came <laughs> i would like to see if anybody would like to ask wendy any questions anybody's up for anything that they'd like to oh, helen thank you that's really interesting to hear your story <laughs> what would you advise a young person today wanting to start on the I'd say go to college um, or university. Um, try and do a foundation because I think that's a fantastic basic grounding of everything and you can pick and choose what you really want to do as well. Um, so do go, I mean I think go to, go to college because that's the best thing. And you meet friends at college as well. Um, you know, like-minded friends, and you're doing something every day that you love and want to do. And I think that's really important, to actually enjoy what you do. Um, you know, when you stop enjoying it, stop doing it. <laughs> you really need to. Thank you. Yeah, following think, your passion, really. Yeah, yeah, it is. Following your dreams. Yeah. And, you know, and never forget, you know, be yourself. Um, don't try and be anyone else. There's no point. Yeah, you just, you know, be yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, did you want to ask? No, I don't know. There's a question. What's the most ambitious thing you've ever taken on and did you succeed? The most ambitious thing? Ooh, having children. <laughs> 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 I hope so. <laughs> she did. Let's laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 they're lovely. <laughs> but um, I think maybe closing my... Be, well, that's, that wasn't ambitious, but it was one of it was a Great. a horrible thing to do, um, and and um, yeah, because that was my life, um, and uh, but then you find something else. I mean, you you don't you know, you don't look back with regret. You move forward, be positive, and uh, and you know. Get on with your life, and and I had a complete career change, um, and uh, and it was the best thing that happened, really.
it's all that stress. Children. All that stress every month, paying the bills. I mean, running a business, oh, it, it's those hard. of you who run a business know, it's not always that easy. And the fashion business particularly. And you, I mean, even Mary Kwan had her pressures yeah. when she had to close her shops yeah. down. Yeah. Uh, it's a very, very difficult business to be in and very challenging. And uh, it's a hard lot of work. Hard, hard, really hard, hard work. A lot of travelling. I mean, we were doing yeah. Milan, Paris, Paris London, London, New, New York. York. And then go to India to buy your fabrics. And menswear and women's wear. And, <laughs> and it's, yes. just, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a nonsense. It's you a, have to create yeah. sort of eight collections a year minimum. Yeah. You're travelling around selling them at the same time you're designing them, at the same time you're finding the fabric. Good job, but we were young. Really. Yes. Well, I wasn't doing anything. I was going around with them promoting it. Are you going to eat it? Yeah, definitely. Young person, I think. Yeah. But it's, no, if you enjoy it, it's, it's well worth it. Yeah. But a lot of the same generation, like Jasper Conrad and John Rocher and Betty Jackson that you were in, the reason they survived was they all went to Debenhams got paid a huge amount of money for putting their names there for yeah. some real yeah. and lossy prices. Yeah, but the Devon stuff was the really big drossy yeah. and it paid them millions. You wouldn't recognise one designer from another. They were just like this stuff so, hanging on the rails and they just uh, made their millions and went and lived in France or wherever they went. <laughs> <laughs> that's the fashion, that's success in the fashion industry. Even Mary made more money than makeup and her tights than anything. That's where the money is. That's yeah, where the that's money, where money is. is. Like making clothes. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. So, what's your favourite item? Do you have a kind of something that you just think this is from a desert island item? I can't. What was that? What is her desert island item? I think item? a big white shirt. A huge white shirt. I've had. Well, it was. One of my students, <laughs> Cos, they're, um, they're, they're directors there, and uh, at Cos, at Cos, oh, yeah, I love Cos, yeah, and that, and I bought that years ago. Mm. It's just a big white shirt, and it never dates. Mm. Yeah. And you wear jeans, you can wear whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it's really good advice. Did you hear all that big white shirt from Cos? <laughs> <laughs> that is a great idea. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Hi, I'm really your story. Do you still make your own clothes or would you promote yeah. making your own clothes? <laughs> 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 yeah. um, I don't make, no, I don't anymore. But um, yes, I, I think. that's the way forward? Yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I mean, sadly, they don't teach needed work at mm. schools anymore, which is a real shame. But it used to be great making your own yeah. clothes. You know, and you, you just do, well, you do whatever. I used to adapt things, adapt old clothes with my mother's, you know, some of her dresses and, you know, just cut them into a, you know, yeah. <laughs> But, no, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. Quite satisfying. Very satisfying, yeah. Social media pictures taken yet. Um, this oh, question, I have a question. Sorry, do you want to? I'd just like to ask you, with all your designs, did you always cut all your own patterns too? Yes. Yes, yeah. I started off, well, when I first started, I used to work in our spare bedroom. <laughs> that we were lucky to have, actually. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> the day. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I used to, you know, cut all the patterns, uh, cut all the, you know, layers of clothes, you know, layers of um, fabric. And I used to, we used to go around every evening, practically, to various... Um, ladies who sewed for me in their homes so John and I used to go around oh, yeah. I guess you got your materials at Berwick Market I some of them yeah, yeah. <laughs> some Borovix Borovix <laughs> Borovix <laughs> good old Borovix yeah, snakeskin lurex yeah. I remember <laughs> I bought a, a roll of it <laughs> I think there was a question if I heard you correctly you mentioned inventing your own fabrics um I didn't invent them Designed. as such. Design my own. I used to work with India a lot, and I used to use a lot of Indian fabrics, and I used to recolor them, and they mm. weave what, yeah. You know, and I once I did well, been to India a few times, but we did go there once, and I, you know, you saw in the villages they were, well, there was weaving e cats, um, and, and it was brilliant, you know, because it wasn't perfect fabric, because it was. 
human, you know, it's mm. human woven and someone, it, the, it might change slightly because someone else took over in the afternoon yeah. <laughs> and it would just be in the villages, in the, yeah, outside, it's brilliant. Yeah. Fabulous fabrics that Wendy did uh, from India for years. Really, yeah. really special. Yeah. She That's was the only one doing them. They're yeah. incredible silks. Wow, that's all my stuff. I'm, all these movies I, I did, I, those silks yeah. were fantastic. <laughs> I think there was a question somewhere over here. I saw. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. We'll come back. Um, I'm just curious to know your experience and skills over the years. Is there a period of time in fashion where you? felt it was a real faux pas and any sort of designs which you felt were out there which you thought really shouldn't have been invented? Of mine? No, no, just generally. Just generally? As, as, as also a spectator in the joint Well, um, I don't know, I think when I first started in the 70s, it was all very ladylike and I think, like Larry Carl was saying, everybody was being yeah, dressed like duchesses. They, they were. And, yeah. and I sort of, I. Most of the designers were evening wear designers, a lot mm -hmm. of them. And I sort of rebelled against that and wanted to just do day wear. I didn't enjoy doing evening wear very much, because um, it wasn't me, I suppose. But, um, but yeah, that 70s sort of lady look. Early 70s. <laughs> <laughs> and when you look back, you think, did, did we really look like that? <laughs> we didn't. None of us, we didn't have a lot of that. More bizarre. Sorry, I don't know. I was just going to ask about, again, about the textiles and the fact that at that point, um, the United Kingdom has such a strong textile um, tradition. Whether you were able just to catch that before everything was suddenly outsourced, you obviously had a mix of wonderful things from. You know, specific places in Europe and the Far East, but and do you think there's any hope for us? Yeah. Can we really have we still got those skills somewhere? Well, I think we have somewhere, um, and I think you used to use tweeds. I used to use a lot of British fabrics: um, Harris tweeds, Irish tweeds, um, Scottish all tweeds, all kinds of tweeds, <laughs> all kinds of tweeds, and Viella. I used to use mm. a lot. Yeah. Um, I mean, Heather Tilbury, who was in the film, yeah, a lot. Tilbury, yeah. she was PR for Viola. Oh, yes, she was. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and so I used to, and I used to, I mean, I suppose I used to quite, use quite strange fabrics, like men's pyjama stripes, yeah. things like that. And I love those, that weirdness of it, that, you know, for a you know, skirt or a you know, shirt or whatever. But, um, yeah, so I used to use a lot of British fabrics. It well. would be wonderful to revive some of those classic English and British fabrics. It really would, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. So we could start Hopefully. talking today um, yeah. about, um, of course, the farmers and the British sheep and British wool and, and how that's just been burned the pieces yeah. and how we, yeah. we did do promotions. They can't it. No, they can't sell it. We did do promotions with British wool, do you remember? We did, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's nice to resurrect it. it. Why can't they sell it? There's, um, no, 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 I'm only for it. Yeah, um, well, British wool is very different from wool in other countries. It's much harsher and it's yes. only right for mostly carpets and things. <laughs> right. um, so traditionally that's what it was used for and I was employed as a PR agency to, to get designers to use it for different things. Uh, but it is not like Italian soft really. merino yeah. wool or whatever. Yeah, so anyway, it's more, it's more problematic to work just, with. So. Yeah. I, just, uh, I was telling Penny and her husband a few weeks ago that I was mending um, a cardigan now. I've run out of wool. No, I know. I went to the shop and bought the wool, and then I ran out. So I was looking up what it was to buy another wool, and I realised that it was, it, first of all, it's extremely expensive. But the sheep um, grew up in South Africa, and then it, then the wool was sent to Texas, which was then made into wool, which was sent to London in this trendy wool shop. Yeah, and I just crazy. drove me mad. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Thing. Well, yeah. you should come and have a look at some of the wool. Some of the wool we've got that Tamsin's found. Mm -hmm. Is made from uh, seaweed and recycled what's plastic, it, recycled waste, plastic the waste yeah. from the sea is now being turned into wool. So that's the good news. That there's, but there's a no point promoting. Oh. You've got to be careful what you buy. There's no point promoting everyone mending something if it's yeah. coming, if doing that journey. No, no, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Quite and it's either. bamboo as well. Bamboo, which is there's yeah. some interesting things yeah. going on yeah. with textiles and wool at the moment. And one, you know ways of looking at it. Okay, Charlie. Yeah, I was just going to ask about fabrics and new innovations to do with eco and what can be used and what we can do to recycle or get rid of 
get a kind of what's going on in the fashion world and you know you see what was the question garment, Charlie sorry so just um, noticing that the odd garment is made from recycled plastics mm -hmm. and just finding out what innovations are going on right now innovation what inv innovations are going on with fabrics Fabric. in the industry yeah. now like Eco, recycled plastic yeah. hmm. well there's a lot of experimentations going on, yeah. um, especially with research students and researching you know, smart fabrics and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, things that, you know, there's been, there's been a lot of experimentation that's been going on for many years using what they call smart fabrics, as Wendy was just saying, where they actually put vitamins into textiles and then they're supposed to make you... Yeah. I mean, that's been going for years and communications and there's all kinds of robotic stuff. And that, but I think a lot was going into it, particularly in Italy, about um, maybe 20 years ago, and it sort of died down again. I, I, I think, think there's a feeling back to natural. The, I think the, the problem mm -hmm. is, Fashion. it's great all the you know, research, and um, but it's very expensive yeah, to yeah. make, and that's yeah. the problem why it actually mm -hmm. yeah. it doesn't really work. It's not practical. Yeah. yeah. But um, anyway, yeah, anyway, we keep going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's always interesting to look at it, but it's, yeah. a, it's but there is this trend definitely back to the natural. How we've all reacted at the thought of the traditional fabrics, and if we could bring those back, and the violas and yeah. so on, it'd be wonderful. Yeah. Anyway, we're not going to take it on. We've done. That. <laughs> no, we've been there and got that particular t-shirt. <laughs> anyway, so if everybody's everybody's. All right, no other questions burning? Okay, well, I'd like everyone to thank Wendy very much for coming. I hope she'll come again.